related. Wow. I know you guys said that. People said it was probably feel related. I did not actually think that that was what happened. What is going on guys, it is JJ here, back with a new video, and today we are going to take a look at the Red Bull Nightmarish Implosion, uh, or I guess more of an explanation from the Nightmarish Implosion that they had at the Bahrain Grand Prix. If you guys missed the live stream for that, uh, for, for the Bahrain Grand Prix race, or the, the highlights reaction afterwards, or just our thoughts on any of anything going on in Bahrain, let me know. Uh, they, the video will be linked in the description or on the info card that should be attached here. But honestly, the Bahrain Grand Prix was it's one of my favorite events. It's the first one I've ever got to watch it live. It's the first one I ever got to experience it with you guys and got to see it as a live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed that. The stream quality will be improving as we uh, sort of tinker with things here and there, but I had an absolute blast doing it. And I'm hoping uh, that we, you know, obviously with the, the upcoming events with F1, that we get to do more of it. So let me know what you guys think about the Bahrain Grand Prix. Let me know your thoughts on Verstappen, uh, Perez, and the entire Red Bull team, including AlphaTauri. So sort of having a nice nightmarish day. Yuki Sonoda, the only one of the Red Bull team to finish, uh, which is extremely surprising when you think about it, but he still finished. P I think it was P8. I think he was P8 or P9. I said pre-race that he would finish in the top 10, and he did. So I was there. I was there uh, close enough. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below on the Red Bull Nightmare. Let's get into the video. As well, guys, you can find the original video down in the description below. Red Bull start to the 2022 Formula 1 season imploded in the final laps of the first race as both Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez suffered what appeared to be the same disastrous failure that turned a decent Bahrain Grand Prix for the team into a nightmare. It became a legitimate fire sale. Uh, listen, I think when I noticed things were starting to go wrong is straight up Pierre Gasly. Pierre Gasly went down off of nothing. Like his his car, his dashboard just went completely black, nothing. And so that set up the safety car. That set up what was spent to be an exciting last couple of laps. But then Max was stopping, steering went off. Uh, Perez was talking about how he, he was having little power outages, little flickers here and there. It just all went tits up. It all went tits up so fast, so, so fast. Everything we'd seen up to the point Verstappen's car ran into trouble suggested Red Bull didn't have anything for Ferrari and Charles Leclerc in a straight fight. They didn't. To go from they an didn't. expected 30 points for second and fourth to leaving Bahrain with nothing was a horror show. And Perez tried to finish too is the thing. He tried to hold off Lewis and just finish when with anything, clear, but he just Verstappen couldn't. Verstappen didn't have an answer for Leclerc. He made a surprise third pit stop in an attempt to shake up a race that was looking settled. While that tactic was nullified by Pierre Gasly's Alpha Tauri retiring and catching fire, which triggered a safety car and allowed Leclerc to safely make an extra stop of his own, any hopes Verstappen had of battling for the win on the restart quickly evaporated. After he just failing couldn't to catch keep him. up with Leclerc, he just couldn't the catch resumed, him. Verstappen thought he had a battery problem. The loss of power eventually became terminal and left the number one Red Bull crawling back to the pits to start its title defence with a DNF. Red Bull will of course complete a thorough investigation between now and next week's Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, but its initial understanding of what happened appears to suggest it was fuel system related. Wow. I know you guys said that. People said it was probably fuel related. I did not actually think that that was what happened. Oh. It's much worse for the team. Sergio Perez suffered the same problem on the final lap of the race while defending what had become third place from Lewis Hamilton. The second Red Bull shut down and spun at the first corner, also retiring. Fuel might not leap out at you as a noteworthy change under F1's radical new rules for 2022, but beyond the huge aerodynamic changes we've got for this year, there's also been a change engine experts have called the biggest since the introduction of the V6 turbo hybrids in 2014. And that's the introduction of what's called E10 fuel. This year, the engines are running on a fuel that features 10% greener ethanol in its makeup, and that has fundamentally changed how the engines run. Mm. So how did this hit Red Bull in the closing mm. stages of the race? The new fuel makes the engines behave very differently, and crucially, it runs at a different temperature to the previous fuel. Many teams noticed this temperature change proving problematic for the fuel systems when running on lower fuel during testing, they were really? able to tackle the problem before Bahrain. But Red Bull didn't do any low fuel running, nor did it complete a full race simulation. So oh. it never got to experience the problem before the first race 
race of the year. And while so, the so they did not complete a race simulation before the first race? Come on, Red Bull. Come on. Dr. Perez appeared to suffer the same problem. The stoppage of the Alpha Tauri of Pierre Gasly, which uses the same engine, was not related. That is believed to have been an MGUK problem. Oh, okay. So Gasly's situation does not correlate. As we've already mentioned, Leclerc seemed to have the race won before the Stafford He was untouchable, guys. Was Leclerc more going was untouchable. On the Red Bull than just the fuel issue. Verstappen drew great attention to a steering problem with his radio messages after his final pit stop, but that was unrelated to his retirement. Red Bull believes a track rod was tweaked when the car was dropped down after its final stop, altering the steering geometry. However, by that stage, Verstappen had already been managing another part of his car. After his thrilling scrap with the clerk over three laps, which we'll come back to shortly, Verstappen said he had to let the Ferrari go because his brakes were overheating. Still, oh, at that wow. stage, Verstappen was happy to accept kicking off his 2022 season with a second place amid some grumbles about Red Bull not letting him push harder on his outlaps after pit stops. Yeah, but he, he wasn't going to catch Leclerc even after harder, this. Straight out of the pits, he could have jumped Leclerc to move into the lead. His team didn't quite share that view, believing that Ferrari's advantage was enough that even if Verstappen had got ahead during the stops, Leclerc would have repassed him for the lead, and later in the stint, Max would have paid for taking that life out of his tires. Exactly, so he would have been screwed either way. Verstappen wasn't happy with his race pace after a strong showing in Friday practice, but he accepted these things can happen when it comes to not quite nailing the setup for a brand new car. He sounded less tolerant of the engine problem that ended his race, saying problems can happen and you might have a retirement, but I think at this level, after already having so much information with the engines and stuff, it should okay. happen. There's so much information with the engines, but it's a whole new season, Max. You got you gotta chill. I really did because we watched his his interview afterwards, he was very mild mannered, but I feel like he was holding so much back. Like, I think he wanted Leclerc bad, and it's under his skin that he could not get him. And then not only that, that then Lewis Hamilton was able to capitalize, the Mercedes team in general was able to capitalize on their retirements and on their failures. You can tell it got under his skin. You can tell he's just so pissed about it. I haven't seen a quote from Sergio Perez yet. I need to go see his interviews on that, because I feel like his would be a good one to get, a, to get an idea on. Mercedes in an upcoming video, but we couldn't end this discussion about a thrilling F1 season opener without talking about the driver and team that took a deserved first victory since 2019. Ferrari was tipped to be a contender again in 2022, and it delivered on that promise immediately, with Charles Leclerc winning from pole position and Carlos Sainz capitalising on Verstappen's problems to complete a remarkable 1-2 finish. Leclerc's supreme talent has never been in doubt, but he's had few chances to show it in the last couple of years after Ferrari's form nosedived in 2020 due to its engine. Yeah, um, however, he looked phenomenal in this race. Looked untouchable. Every single time Red Bull got close, Leclerc found his way, found his way to go away. And even Carlos Sainz had nothing for him. His own teammate had nothing of a response for him. The whole race. However, in his first race back in a race winning car, he delivered the goods and got stuck in with world champion Verstappen on track in a battle that potentially laid down a marker for the season. Verstappen has earned a reputation as the toughest driver on the grid when it comes to wheel to wheel combat, and the clerk faced a stern test when the Red Bull driver attacked on those three consecutive laps in the middle of the and race. And he cooked his tires for Each it time, too. Leclerc it probably back, is brave. He wasn't afraid to do it forcefully most notably first time around when he boldly turned in ahead of Verstappen, having got a run around the outside of him heading to turn four with DRS. But this battle wasn't all about bravery. The clerk revealed after the race he'd been making sure Verstappen was ahead of him before they got to the DRS detection point for the run to turn four, so he'd always have the benefit of the overtaking aid for his retaliation. Which is a genius move. It's unlikely it's Verstappen had any move. doubts over what the clerk is capable of, but at the first attempt, the man now leading the world championship has made it clear he has the sheer speed, bravery, and intelligence on track to be a fierce competitor to overcome in 2020. That's going to be good. I mean, in general, the overtaking in the middle of that race, I think is what 
that, I mean, it's what really does set the tone for the season, guys. The Ferrari is the car to beat. I don't think anyone's going to really have an answer for them these first couple of races. Um, Mercedes seems like it's completely out of it, um, which I don't... I, maybe we need to watch a video on that to see what, if Mercedes can find a way to even... I'm not even sure. It's just the pace. The Mercedes car just doesn't have the pace and the engine's just not quick enough to keep up with the Ferrari, let alone the Red Bull. The Red Bull, if they can get rid of these reliability woes, they'll be stuck in. Verstappen will be there. It's just, you can you can tell that there's a humongous reliability issue for them. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about the Red Bull Nightmare down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and peace.